Oh, hey, it's Wes. And today we are talking about the new Brighton Star 35.95 lens for Sony E mount. It'll be out on a few other mounts as well. An APS-C lens with an ultra wide aperture. I mean, we've seen this before. Is this something new and special? Well, we're going to find out. First of all, we're going to talk about build quality as always. For the build quality here, no big surprises. This is an all metal design from a Chinese manufacturer. It feels nice in the hand. Oh, I love this gunmetal mount on the back. That looks just amazing. I have had this lens off and on quite a few times. I haven't had any chipping on the back. That is a concern that I have whenever something is gunmetal. Our focus and aperture rings feel fantastic. It is an externally focusing lens and it is not weather sealed, so you gotta watch out for that. Let's listen to the aperture ring. And the focus ring. Very nice on both fronts. It is a permanently clicked aperture ring. This does not come with a lens hood. The box that it comes in is very nice. Look at this plushy box. Ooh. As you can see, there is no lens hood in here. So overall, the fit and finish is very nice. The feel in the hand is great. We'll talk about that more in handling though. The lens cap is one of those slide on metal ones. Feels very thick and rugged, but we'll talk about in the next section how we feel about those. I'm gonna give this an 8.5 out of 10. This video is brought to you by Dossier and their Black Friday promotion, which is currently ongoing, where you can save up to 55%. You're already saving quite a bit of money just by going with Dossier over the major fashion brands, which can cost one, two, three, four hundred dollars a bottle. Whereas with Dossier, it's significantly less. There's a link in the description below where you can check out the savings you can get there. You can save a lot of money by stocking up, by getting ready for Christmas. These make great gifts for family or friends or for yourself, let's face it. If you want to smell nice, and spend less, check out that link below to help support this channel. Here we have on the table three of my current favorite scents from Dossier. Woody Tobacco has a slightly more old school vibe to it. Woody Sage, which is a very nice unisex scent, so it's not like heavy in your face, I'm a man. It's something in between that is, that is warm and sweet. It's a bit more of a uh, summer scent though, so if you're not in the northern hemisphere like me, a little more appropriate for this time of year. And probably my overall favorite from Dossier, Ambery Mint, which is a nice rich scent. Again, more of a, a wintry tone. So for the winter right now, my two big ones are Woody Tobacco and Ambery Mint. And even though I don't have any weddings to attend right now, I do still like to smell nice. <laughs> and you know what? I would like you to smell nice as well. So check out the link in the description below for Dossier and especially for their Black Friday event. And now, back to the video. Handling and usability. This is very small, but it is an APS-C lens. The image circle that it projects is a little wider than APS-C, which is nice, so you can crop that manually if you want. For usability, I do prefer to have the aperture ring behind the focus ring. This one's right in front, and so you are going to bump it. The clicks are fairly firm, so you're not going to bump it crazy easily. It does happen and has happened to me quite a bit. The feel of the focusing is fantastic, feels great in the hand, nice and smooth, well dampened, long throw. The lens cap is unfortunately one of those slide on designs that over time will slide off more easily. And even right now it occasionally comes off in the bag and that's kind of a shame, not great for usability. Perfectly fits like the size of an APS-C camera, which is this is designed for. So I'm gonna give this an 8.5 out of 10 for handling and usability. It feels great. Image quality, and this is where I was surprised. This is another one of those lenses that has kind of a split personality. When you set this to 0.95, completely wide open, we have this dreamy, creamy look to it that, well, you know what to expect from 0.95 lens. Everything is just soft and beautiful and blooming. But when you stop this lens down, say to 2.0, 2.8, it is very sharp, very crispy, very contrasty. 
So you can get either look that you want with this lens. I used it outside and got it all bloomy and blown out, and I, then I used it in the studio and it looked perfectly respectable. The uh, flaring is better controlled than I expected it to be, honestly, so the coatings seem to be all right on this lens. However, again, wide open, you are going to bloom quite a bit. Chromatic aberration is quite bad wide open and it shows up in the bokeh, but when you stop it down, it does clean up quite a bit as well. It doesn't go completely away. Color accuracy is all right, not great. When you're wide open, the colors are a little bit wonky, but when you stop it down, they become more accurate because there's less uh, magic floating around inside this lens. Now, if this was just a f2 lens, I would probably give this an 8.5 or even a 9 on image quality, but we do have to count for the wider apertures, so I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10, which is a very high score for a lens of this category. Image character, and that's where we expect a lens like this to excel, and does it. Again, gorgeous smooth bokeh, not distracting backgrounds. Let's have a look at our cat's eye bokeh test here. Now, if you use this in full frame mode and crop it yourself, the bokeh at the very edges is going to look very strange. But that's just fine, because that's my fault. But the bokeh just in from that, it's not quite cat's eye, it's more of a D shape, it's a little smoother, so you don't end up with a lot of swirl with this lens. And as you stop it down, let's see here, it stays reasonably round, but we have so much room to stop down in this lens that it does start getting a little angular, but it doesn't tend to get busy. We get some nice flaring and blooming going on from being backlit. The uh, sun stars are... Not great, they're kind of weird. <laughs> a little disappointed there. The flare artifacts tend to be on the greenish side of things, which is very common on Sony, but it's nice when things look a little bit warmer than that. Overall, it has a great and versatile character. You can go wide open, go dreamy, you can stop it down and still have nice round bokeh and have a dis different personality for the lens. I'm gonna give that an 8.5 out of, out of 10. Very good. Focusing performance. This takes into account autofocus and manual focus and how well a manual focus lens works for you. So this lens, when you are wide open at 0.95, focus peaking doesn't work fantastically. Then as soon as you stop it down to 1.4, it is quite reliable to use. We do not have electronic contacts on the back for automatic focus assist systems, which Sony supports. The focus throw is reasonably long and feels lovely in the hand. So it is a pleasure to manually focus. It's just a little bit tricky to get perfectly into focus when it is at 0.95. And I'm not just talking about how shallow the depth of field is, just with the extra blooming that comes along with being at that wide of an aperture on this lens. And so this is going to get a 3.5 out of 10. Value. And that's where we're hoping to do well with a brand like this, a new brand that's trying to get inroads into the market. And as such, we find the Brighton Star coming in at $200, an aggressive price point. Comparable to that, we have a 30, the Seven Artisans 35.95 for $250. And let's face it, these lenses look suspiciously similar. But the Brighton Star costs less. Viltrox 33 1.4. 284, here's a Miticon 35.95 for $400, Venus 35.95 for $500, but there is a cheaper lens, it's not phenomenal though, the newer 35 1.1 for $130, that one is, mm. anyway, <laughs> so anyway, this is probably the best that you can do for a .95 lens that has perfectly usable image quality, depending on how you use it. I'm gonna give that a nine out of 10 for value, a solid value from a solid lens. That gives us a total score of 75%, which lands us here around the middle of the West score spreadsheet. Now, if we only rank that on the manual focus score, that is 83%. But overall, if you're looking for a versatile but dreamy lens, I would recommend this one. It works great, and it's a good price. Especially if you're using a crop sensor camera and you want to get some wider aperture portraiture going on, this will get the job done for you. If you want to pick one up, feel free to use the link in the description below to help support this channel and feed my fat cats. So until next time, let's take some dreamy photos. Thank you.